delivery time. All right, so exciting day today. We're gonna to start decorating. We're not really ready to decorate, certainly not on the ceilings or walls, but the stone exposed face um, is just, it's ready to go. So that's gonna to be today's challenge to tackle that. So as you might know, if you've followed other projects um, in our house, both internal sort of decorating jobs and also woodwork, you'll know that we use, um, we've used the Earthborn paints before, clay paint, and uh, it's a gr great solution for lots of different applications really. But Earthborn really kindly supplied the paint for these uh, two walls. So big shout out to them. And I'm gonna try and try, try something a bit different this time. And I'm gonna try and use a sprayer to spray the stonework. So I'm hoping that by using the sprayer, we can get all the different angles that certainly getting the first couple of coats on or the first little mist coat, it'll get a lot further in um, than with a brush. So one problem we've got is, um, is clay paint is quite thick, like really thick, which is great for smoothing out walls and smoothing out old plaster or stonework, but the sprayer might struggle with it. Um, so might be a bit of a trial and error, thinning it down. Um, they suggest thinning it anyway, uh, certainly for the first coat, but bearing in mind we're using a sprayer and it's a very cheap um, HVLP sprayer, uh, it might be that we have to thin it down even further. So I'm gonna have one final sweep down. I will be bringing up vacuum later anyway, but I've kind of swept down the walls, scrubbed them down where possible, and I just wanna make sure there's no dust around the bottom of the wall that might blow up with the sprayer. But luckily the, the wind is blowing in such a way that the dust is being pulled out this window, which is good. So the sprayer I'm gonna use is the little Erlex DIY paint sprayer station, and I've used it for undercoating all the skirting boards and a few other projects in the past. But never, well certainly never for any smooth walls, we might try that, but for this stone wall, the aim is that um, it's gonna help get into all those gaps. But I might use it now just because it's gonna give us a jet of air just to kind of dust off the stonework before we start. It might make more mess, but we'll give it a go. Well, that seemed to blow everything off at least. I don't know where it's gone, probably land back on it, but um, at least the spread is working. All right, so I'm gonna start thinning down this paint now and see how we get. We are so adventurous. Plain white, but it's gonna work. It's, uh, it's a subtle palette, I'll give you that. Right, um, so they suggest I don't know what they suggest, 10% water? No, four parts, four part paint, one part water for general use, especially if it's on, you know, as a mist coat. Uh, but because we're putting it through sprayer, we want it a little bit looser. And I haven't got any of those, you can get like a viscosity measure and all sorts for spraying, but we'll just go trial and error and see how we get on. I'd say that's probably about one to three almost. It's gonna just soak it up, that wall, because it's just bare, dry, lime, uh, limestone and lime mortar, so I'm not expecting the first coat to give us much white on the wall at all. I might be wrong. But what this clay paint usually does is when it, goes, when it hits the wall and soaks in, it kind of locks in any dust or anything loose that happened to be there. It's almost like a little clay slip and it binds it all together ready for the proper coat so that's the plan all right we'll whip it up with this little paint stirrer so i guess the main benefit of spraying the clay paint over any other paint is that we don't have to worry about any of the odors or the over spray that's going to be in the air. I mean, I'll probably wear a dust mask anyway. Just uh, in case there's any safety sallies you want to 
mode on YouTube, but to be quite honest, this is as organic as it comes when it comes to paint, I think. So, um, right, I think we're there. So I, I'd say it's not far off what a normal mist coat would be. It's quite thin, uh, but still, obviously, a good solid white. Earthborn did send me loads of information as far as what tip size to use, but uh, we're just going to work with what we've got. So I'm going to just start this section to give you an idea. Uh, there will be overspray, so I'll probably pack this camera away and use the Go GoPro so I can just wash it off after. But hopefully you'll be able to get an idea of if this is a, a worthwhile method to get this clay paint on bare stonework. Well, I don't really have anything to compare it to, but that seemed to work pretty well. I'm going to try it later on, I'm going to try it on some bare plasterboard just to see what the texture is like. This is such a textured wall anyway that the finish of the paint is less important, but it seems to be getting into a lot of the gaps. I think if we get any overspray on here, we can just give it a light sand before we start the uh, the ceiling. It's going to be white anyway, but I don't want too much of the texture showing through. I could probably have painted this before I put the plasterboard up and just oversprayed onto the insulation, but... Right, so here we go. We're going for round two. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit thicker with the spray this time. It's the same consistency with the paint. Um, and I think that will give us the majority of the coverage. I'm going to go up and down this time and hopefully that will catch what I didn't get the other way. Um, but I do think we'll probably slop, it, slop on the last coat with the brush. But what this spraying has helped, I think, with uh, suppressing the, any dust or loose stuff. So we've basically got a fairly sealed surface now that when we come in with the brush, we're not going to be like raking out bits of plaster uh, or anything that's loose still. But it's good coverage on that first one. I've been doing a little test patch on a bit of plaster, just on the back of a bit of plasterboard, just to see if it's worth um, having a look at it to do the walls and ceilings. I, th I think for the speed of using a roller, we'll probably stick with a roller, but bit of an experiment going on over there as well. So I, the over spray that's hit the glass I'm just going to clean off afterwards and um, bother masking that. Same with the floor, the floor's got to be sanded so barely any's gone on. Uh, there's not been that much over spray anyway. So that's the second coat done now. Um, what I've changed from is from going like a general spray to actually holding it far closer than you would if you were spraying timber or a flat wall. Um, and almost like drenching the, the mortar slightly to smooth it all out. Um, I've left, you know, there's still quite a bit of texture on the wall, but if we're going more like the lime washed look in the bathroom, we put it on so heavy that it actually started filling out all those little gaps in between. So I've kind of gone the midway point now. Um, it doesn't drip, that's the nice thing, it's so thick that, and it dries so quick that it doesn't drip. So you really can, you know, hold it there and get it into all the, all the gaps. I think it's probably been about 10 minutes per coat with the sprayer. And I guess we're four meters by two and a half minus a bit of slate ceiling so it's pretty quick to go on but I am aware that I've just jumped into doing this because I'm impatient and I still need to fill the gap between where the plasterboard meets the wall because we're not skimming these ceilings uh, or walls uh, that's quite important so I'm probably gonna do that now and I'm gonna make quite a wet uh, mix of the plaster 
and almost use a, a paintbrush maybe uh, once it's once I've troweled it in there use a paintbrush just to smooth the gap so it's a bit of a transition between the stone and the ceiling. week on with the project now and the walls, both the ends of the house, are finished. Uh, as you can see there's a few little touch-ups to do but I think we'll do them when we snag the roof. Um, so the workflow was mist coat with the spray, first coat with the spray and then go over with some neat clay paint to fill the mortar. Um, the mortar here in this house, just because it, it was never an exposed wall before, it was, it's been left quite rough um, and the, the aggregate and the, the build up of it is quite a, a coarse texture so we really needed to get in there and Joe went over the whole thing with a, with a brush just kind of coating all of those uh, mortar joints to get that even white across the, uh, the whole wall so there are a few little in, well, not imperfections uh, they're just kind of beauty spots let's call them but where there's kind of little cavities and tiny little holes in, in the mortar, which rather than start plugging it with cork or filler or anything like that, or getting some lime mortar made up, we, we've kind of left those all bits and they really don't show up that much. So I'll take you to the other end of the loft now to show you that wall, which is also being painted, but we came across a little bit of a, an odd situation there. So down this end on this wall, Joe still wants to go over with uh, the brush in some of the areas, uh, certain areas are, are finished and ready to go, but there's a bit to touch up up here. But one really odd thing that we came across is when we first put the mist coat on the whole wall, the area above this window started discolouring, started going brown. Um, and that was, it first started looking like it was a creamy sort of magnolia colour, and then it, it kind of went to this light beige, and it's still, uh, you know, there now. So you can see up here, this is what I'm talking about. It's kind of mainly in the mortar, and just around the edge of the stones really and you can clearly see it's gone a beige colour which is not in our colour scheme um, so this is literally only had that one coat, that one spray coat so we could just keep slapping it on there and it, it may well go away I'm going to leave it just for another few days whilst we're doing other jobs up here to see what happens, does it come through anymore it, it really just happened as soon as we put the paint on and I think we've got four chimneys on this side of the house uh, within this stone wall and they all converge at this point. So potentially there's 60, 70 years of coal fires that have been burning within this wall all converging here and going up to the stack. So I wonder if this is some sort of um, tar or kind of coal um, particles or whatever that are built up in the stonework, especially in these mortar joins and that's perhaps coming through the wall. Uh, before all this was uh, plaster, so we would never have known that there was anything there, um, but perhaps now we've painted it, it's kind of drawing some out. So we'll leave it there. It may be a case that we just have to put an extra coat or two over it. I don't really want to start using stain blocker or anything like that because it's going against the whole idea of being breathable. So uh, we're just going to play that one by ear and just see how it works. Because it is so textured here, because we are going on so heavy with that uh, third coat, the, the kind of brush coat, we, uh, we ended up using five litres per wall, I think. Let me find out where's it in. Yeah, five litres. So with a little bit of quick maths, uh, you know, this is really should be giving you about 10 square metres per litre uh, per coat, like any emulsion, that's kind of a, a go-to rough average, I'd say. Um, so I'd say we probably used uh, just over double the amount you would ordinarily use. So if you are painting really rough, textured old walls, you need to kind of take that into consideration, perhaps. So the next job is going to be decorating. We've got most of the prep work done on these walls and ceilings, a uh, few of the joins I just need to 
uh, tape and skim out a little bit and there's a little bit of a skim to do on one of the old line walls as well um, but we're getting there so thanks for watching uh, again thank you to Earthborn for sending us the paint and I'll put a link to their kind of blog and information below and make sure you subscribe join us on the channel uh, and kind of follow us through this project and, uh, and all the projects in the future so thanks for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time